Uh, G'day guys, today we're talking about the weapons that were used in the early medieval period. There's so much myth and misconception out there, thanks to Hollywood and all that kind of thing. I thought we'd go through and have a bit of a chat about the main weapons that were used during the early medieval period. That's all coming up. So the first weapon we're going to talk about is the spear, by far the most common weapon uh, and possibly possibly one of the most effective. Um, this is a ranged weapon, in other words I can hold, hold my opponent off quite easily. Uh, I have a lot of control over, over a weapon like this, um, it's quite a precise weapon. I've seen some very interesting research which suggests that most of the time a spear can defeat a sword which I find very very interesting and we'll be doing some studies and tests on that ourselves in the coming months. Weapons like the spear would have been made from bog iron which is actually a renewable source but not high quality but cheap, effective um, and, and very easy to use. This is something that someone would learn to use I think from early childhood and um, this would be definitely a primary weapon um, for everybody. In the shield wall this would give you um, a really good standoff weapon um, that I can use to tackle my opponents as they come closer um, long before I'm in range of their uh, swords and so on. Next weapon I'm going to talk about is the sax. Uh, this is a really amazing piece of kit. Um, this particular one is made by Windlass and it's a direct copy of one which you'll find uh, in the British Museum. It's a really lovely, lovely piece. A sax, again, would be made from bog iron, so it's very easy to produce. Um, it's, it's quite a... Uh, and it's the kind of thing that everyone would have. It's just an everyday item. Saxes came in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. They're primarily a single-bladed weapon and they seem to have been used uh, from the classical period, that is the Roman period, right through well into the Crusading era. In fact, you'll find pictures of them in the Morgan Bible, um, which really kind of indicates they were still being used in the 1300s and so on, much later than I would have thought myself. Um, I like, find it's a very, a very interesting weapon to use. An axe, again, an everyday item would have been made from, again, bog iron and a simple piece of wood to half to handle. This particular one is a Type G axe based on a find from a place called Mammon in Denmark. Um, I really like these. I find these are just a phenomenal piece of, um, piece of kit to have. I think when you look at an axe you can see how it becomes so intimidating in the hands of, uh, of a warrior. And intimidation and fear is what it's all about. Um, projecting that kind of um, concern, I guess, for your own bodily and in being intact uh, is, is a big thing. An axe can do a devastating amount of damage. I spent 14 years of my life as a combat medic in the army and um, uh, definitely uh, this is something I would be very concerned about if I saw a opponent coming at me with very easy to use an axe and um, in the right hands it can be absolutely devastating. So again, uh, a really easy piece of kit to use. What's interesting is, is these, um, I think, are very much a utilitarian type of shape. They could be used around a camp. They could be used for cutting up, you know, big portions of meat. They could be used for um, uh, uh, creating fences, cutting down trees, and also, you know, butchering other human beings. It's quite interesting because in the later 
parts of the so-called early medieval period, we start to see the evolution of um, the Dane Axe, what's sometimes called the Dane Axe or the Great Axe is another description for it. This is a two-handed axe and seems to have come into play around about the time of King Canute. A two-handed axe is, is, I think, even more devastating. These things can split shields, split armor. You can use them to, um, in, in quite a surgical kind of precise way, uh, to hook shields or to uh, even grab someone by the ankles and drag them out in front of their shield wall and butcher them in front of their colleagues. They're, uh, they're an incredible piece of kit and um, really quite amazing. Again, very simple, very inexpensive, but quite devastating in the right hands. I think before you get into primary weapons, you always have the staff. I think this is an underrated, you know, not even really looked at weapon by so many historical reenactors. But yet a staff would have been used, you know, really since, since the age of the human being. There are phenomenal piece of kit, um, very very simple, no cost whatsoever and you, you can again use them quite precisely but also um, again very devastating and something as simple as this in some skilled hands would easily outrank a sword in the wrong hands. The English are well known for their use of the quarterstaff but um, yeah, I think it's a great piece of kit to have. So naturally we have the sword. This is um, an early so-called Viking sword. Swords would not have been very common whatsoever and they would have been reserved really for the, the chieftains, the you know professional soldiers of their time, the herd or the um, huskars, that kind of thing. Um, these are a, a magnificent pieces of kit and in the right hands really quite devastating but um, I don't think they would have been very popular and I don't think you would have seen very many of them on early battlefields. I know you, you see that portrayed in historical dramas but it's, it's, I just don't see it and the evidence certainly doesn't support it either. What's quite interesting about actual historical early medieval swords is they're a lot shorter and slightly broader than you'd probably realize a lot lighter too only around about a kilo in weight archery and um, the bow and arrow or the longbow particularly but also the crossbow I don't own a crossbow yet but crossbow um, but bows were, were definitely used and you can see and we know this because whilst we haven't found very many bows whatsoever um, save I think Four in Scandinavia, we have, we find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of arrowheads all over Western Europe, and that's quite interesting because obviously those arrowheads got there for a reason. Certainly, what's been interpreted as arrowheads. We know uh, the Romans were using bows and arrows, and we know the longbow actually dates back to around about I don't know. I think it's around about 20,000 BC. So it's quite conceivable then that this was used throughout the medi early medieval period. And we also have descriptions in sagas, we have descriptions in um, things like the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle of uh, people using uh, bows and arrows uh, to devastating effect. What's interesting I think is that um, there were no formalized units within uh, the, Vikings or the, Sa the Vikings or the Saxons um, in terms of archery, whereas the Normans had dedicated archer units, which made them quite interesting that way. And certainly firing a volley of arrows would um, disrupt the intended plan of a battle from your opponent. But a single archer being able to move around quietly, um, to be able to move around, you know, purposefully, using cover and just taking um, shots now and again can quite easily disrupt a shield wall and take out um, fairly precisely uh, opponents that might be in that shield wall and, and therefore be able to create um, opportunities for his side. Bows at this time during the early medieval period we believe, historians believe, 
would have been around about a 50 to 60 pound draw weight. That's actually fairly significant because um, we know in the later medieval period, in the high middle ages, you see bows of, of you know, 120, 140 pound draw weight which were recovered from things like the Mary Rose. However, um, there's nothing whatsoever that gives us any indication of how strong the bows really would have been in terms of um, the early medieval period and it's, it's based I guess on speculation and conclusions drawn from text as to how strong some of these early medieval bows would have been. It also comes down to uh, I guess the need, the height and skill of the archer and also um, the types of armour you're trying to defeat all come into it you see because if you have people all running around in chainmail then you need a heavier draw bow weight there, um, and therefore you're going to use longer arrows you're going to use different types of arrowheads whereas in the earlier medieval period um, we don't tend to see as much of that by far to me the most significant weapon of the medieval period the early medieval period is actually the shield the type of shield in use at the time actually does have a lot of influence on the type of weapons that were used at the time. And we do see those changes throughout the period. However, what's interesting about the shield is that the shield actually provides a great deal of protection without me needing to be having to wear the heavier chain mails and that kind of thing. And if I can be skillful and incorporate the use of my weapons, such as an axe or a sword, then I can um, provide a, a really interesting and uh, dedicated correction. Then I can use these to devastating effect on my enemy uh, by being able to manipulate my shield, manipulate my weapon, look for the opportunities, and strike and bring that to a conclusion. I nearly forgot about this one because it's such a simplistic piece of kit and I think most people would really just simply forget about it but there we go. So this is a sling, a shepherd's sling. These things have been used for goodness knows how many thousands of years probably since um, the humans came down from the trees. It's such a simple piece of item you can make them purely out of um, rope or hemp cord or whatever you want to do. This particular one has a small leather pouch to hold the stone in place. And this is a devastating weapon. Accurate, short range, very easy to carry, very easy to conceal if you wanted to. Um, you can have different types of slings with, for, for different types of projectiles. Some slings were attached to a piece of wood or a pole which would obviously become a staff sling. These things are absolutely devastating. You see them being used today uh, in various parts of um, the Middle East and so on. Um, so simple, so simple. If you believe the Bible, David killed Goliath with one of these things. If you don't believe the Bible, then uh, look at the, the Battle of Teutoburg Forest where uh, Arminius took on four Roman legions, that's roughly speaking 20,000 Roman soldiers. It's a phenomenal amount of people, um, plus the auxiliaries, you know, uh, and they were primarily armed with, with the sling. Now we have no idea how many people the, um, the Germanic tribes lost, but definitely the Romans lost. A weapon like a sling has a range of roughly speaking 20 to 30 meters with the right sort of skill. Now that's obviously going to depend upon the size and shape of the projectile, the type of cord and the skill of the user. But 30 meters, highly accurate and devastating effect, has a very similar kind of impact to a small bullet of today. So something like 9mm 40 or 45, something like that. Um, and, and definitely something like this would be used. Now, there's very little reference to these, strangely enough, in both chronicles and uh, in sagas and that kind of thing. And I find that strange because um, something like this would have been very common. 
Now because we haven't found any doesn't mean none existed. Uh, we know these have been used for many, many thousands of years. We know they're used today. Um, simple, easy to use, very easy to learn. You can learn to use one of these in really just a few minutes time. So, uh, and, and this is the, the weapon really, I guess, of the farmer. So the, the militias of the time, the Vikings, the Saxons, Normans and so on, would have definitely been able to carry something like this in their pouch and um, be able to use it in the farms to clear off birds and pests from their, their crops. Perhaps even take on a wolf or something like this because I could say absolutely devastating and absolutely accurate. And there we go guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.